Hi, um, my name is Georg Rehm. I'm joining you live from Berlin, Germany. Um, thank you for the invitation. In the next 15 minutes, I will give you a brief overview of two U larger European projects in uh, the language technology space. And please, ex sorry, I'm not doing this talk in, uh, in Icelandic. My Icelandic is a bit rusty, so I have to fall back to English. Sorry about that. So first up, I will give you a brief history and context of uh, these two larger European projects. Uh, the first one is called European Language Grid. I will talk about this one first, and then um, I also have a couple of slides on the European Language Equality Project, and they both connect very, very nicely with what has been presented so far in this event, which I've tried to follow uh, through the live stream. So our point of departure in this uh, presentation today is multilingualism. Multilingualism in Europe is the concept is at the heart of the European project, at the heart of the European idea. We have 24 official European Union languages and they all have the same status. They are all on eye level. No language is better or bigger or more important than the other one. They are all the same, roughly. Um, in addition to the 24 official EU languages of the member states, we have the languages of the associated countries like Icelandic, um, obviously, we have dozens of co-official languages, regional languages, minority languages, languages of immigrants, of trade partners, of tourists, and so on. And this multilingual web uh, creates quite a few economic, social, and also technical challenges. First up, the digital single market, which is one of the big flagship projects of the European Commission, needs to be multilingual. If it's not multilingual, if it doesn't support all the languages in a cross-lingual manner, then we don't have a digital single market at all. Cross-border, cross-lingual, and also cross-cultural communication is also a huge challenge um, that includes aspects like fake news, organized disinformation campaigns, and so on, um, which also need to be tackled. And we have another more fine-grained problem, and that's the fragmentation of the European language technology market and landscape. You talked a lot about the Icelandic situation today, um, and the European situation is, is a different beast, and I will talk about this in this presentation. We've been working on these topics now for more than 10 years, uh, starting out with a European network of excellence called Metanet. Um, we produced some software, some open resource exchange infrastructures. We did some studies. We had some additional projects to enlarge the community and our most recent endeavors are now starting in 2019 European Language Grid and just recently started in January 2021 European Language Equality. Before I talk about these projects, I want to briefly highlight uh, one larger study that we did together with more than 230 colleagues computational linguists, but also computer science colleagues and linguists um, on the state of technology support for Europe's languages. And these are the languages that we uh, did a couple of deep dives on, including Icelandic. As you can see, we had all European Union languages in scope, and we tried to find what is the technology support of these languages. And our findings were yeah, rather, rather negative, a bit dire, actually. So there's not a single language with excellent support. Um, and we measured the support here in four different categories, machine translation, text analytics, speech technologies, and resources. One language with good support, English, a couple of languages like French and Spanish and Dutch with moderate support. And then there's a long tail of languages uh, with either fragmentary support or weak or no support through language technologies at all. Back then, and we did this in 2012, Icelandic belonged to the weakest or uh, yeah, least category here, as you can see on the slide. But um, in graphical form, it looks like this. So we have one language, English, and then a couple of other languages with a bit more support through language technologies, and then this long tail of languages with little or no support. 
as I mentioned, we carried out this study in 2011, 2012. In the meantime, uh, just going back to the previous presentation, and you've seen what modern large scale language models can do. Support has overall improved, yes, in the meantime, thanks to neural technologies and language models and so on, but the bigger picture appears to remain mostly the same. So we have one language, and that's English, with very good support, and then this long tail of languages with uh, significantly less support. The European Parliament realized this. In 2018, they passed this resolution that you can see on the slide here uh, with a landslide vote, 592 yes votes, um, and this resolution called language equality in the digital age is calling for more language equality in the digital age. All languages are supposed to have the same level of support through technologies, among others. And the report back then in the parliament was calling also for the establishment of a European language technology platform for sharing of, uh, sharing of services, sharing of resources and also to enable and to empower European SMEs to use language technologies. And this now dovetails nicely with the European Language Grid project, um, which started in January 2019. Um, in the, back then, we could still have face-to-face -face meetings. It's still not entirely possible in Germany, um, but with the vaccination deployment, I think we will be there in a couple of months. So the main objective of this project is to establish the European language grid as a cloud platform, as the primary language technology platform and marketplace in Europe to tackle the fragmentation of the European language technology landscape. What does it mean, the fragmentation? We have about 1,000 companies, a bit more actually, 1,000 companies working and developing language technologies all over Europe. Most of these companies are SMEs with 20, 30, 40 employees. They work in very specific niches in terms of technologies, very specific niches in terms of sectors and domains, and usually only on their own language or the language in which they are situated, the country. Um, so we have a large, large base of language technology companies, uh, but they don't know each other. They don't collaborate with exceptions, of course, but there is a stark fragmentation and we want to get rid of this fragmentation. It's time to do this. The platform supports commercial and non-commercial industry-related language technologies, both functional, meaning actual running tools, and non-functional. So uh, ELG is a cloud platform. It's a web-based cloud platform. It can be used using APIs uh, and also on the web, uh, on the ELG website. And we want to enable the whole European language technology community that develops and deploys language technologies to make use of this platform, to upload services, to share their resources, to share their data sets. This is as technical as it gets in this presentation, the architecture diagram. I'm not going into details, just wanted to mention that we take on board in the European language grid running tools from companies, from research groups, and we hope we get many, many tools and many resources from Iceland as well. Um, as individual Docker containers, so we can run these tools as Docker containers that adhere to a minimum set of, of um, technical requirements and then they can be used and deployed through the grid. So um, I have a brief screencast here that I wanted to show you um, to illustrate what this is. So this is the uh, landing page of the European Language Grid website, the catalog as we call it. When, when, you, call, uh, when you click on the big pink button, um, you can see uh, and it will happen very soon here, then you can <laughs> see the, the catalog list. And it's like an actual catalog, like a, like a repository interface, like the yellow pages of European language technology. Uh, we did this in, in January this year, so the numbers are uh, much higher now. We have about 2,000 resources in the catalog. We have about 200 or 50, 250 um, running services, running tools in the system that can be used using API calls. Um, so let me just briefly skip in the little stream here. So what we can do is um, also we, we enable testing and running, running these services through the website. So this is named entity recognition for French, as you can see. Yeah, so named entities names 
in French text are recognized and annotated and highlighted. This is an example for machine translation from English to German um, with, a, with an example text here, and then you can see the translation. And we have hundreds of these services, and we hope we will get hundreds of additional ones uh, once the system goes fully live. It is already fully live and can be used also to not only store and upload running services, functional tools, but also data sets and corpora and grammars and language models and many, many other things. So I think you get the overall impression from this brief video. And just to, to stick to this slide here for a second longer, we also have a Python development um, software development kit which you can use to call these different APIs, these different language technology services from Python, which is pretty nifty. So what can we do with this? Um, data consumers can search and browse the ELG catalog. They can look for data sets for corpora. Service consumers can do the same. They can make use of these services using APIs. Um, this is very, very simple and very, very, it is technical, yes, but very simple. Um, and data providers and technology providers can also uh, include their resources and services um, in an efficient way. So who are our main target users and stakeholders, companies that develop language technologies and integrate them and that purchase them? And also not only companies, but also universities. We collaborate with many different initiatives and projects all over Europe. We have a strong community all over Europe. We set up 32 national competence centers and um, Adequo, our national competence center had in Iceland um, already presented at the event today. So um, if you want to know more about European Language Grid, um, you can check out our MetaForum conference series due to the pandemic. The most recent edition was fully recorded, took place online, it was recorded and it's available on YouTube if you want to know more. Um, I just want to spend two more minutes on European language equality. This is our ELG sister project, which recently started coordinated by our colleagues and friends at Dublin City University Adept Center in Dublin, Ireland, 52 partners from all over Europe, um, including uh, a partner from Iceland obviously, and uh, the objective of this project is the development of a strategic research agenda to achieve digital language equality in Europe by 2030. It's an ambitious goal to reach digital language equality, to have the same technical support for our languages in Europe in about 10 years. Um, and in this project, we developed the plan how to do this. Yeah, So it's a large community effort and we invite all language communities, all LT developing companies and research groups to participate. Please stay tuned. We will circulate surveys and polls and votings and so on very, very soon. And the project will uh, finish in June 2022 uh, with a joint MetaForum conference together with ELG, which will finish up at the same time in the same month. If you want to know more, um, we have a website, ob obviously, <laughs> for the project European Language Equality, where we also um, explain the project in a bit more detail and where you can also find ways to participate very, very soon. So to sum up, um, we want with these projects, uh, first up, to establish the European language grid as the primary platform and marketplace for language technology in Europe. This is an initiative and utility from the European language technology community for the European language technology community, including industry, including research. The, high, uh, the, the European landscape is highly fragmented. We have more than 1,000 companies working in this space. We have more than 600 research groups working in this space. And we want to pro provide the right umbrella platform to bring this community closer, excuse me, closer together. The global market size and the global market size of the global natural language processing and language technology uh, market is enormous. By 2025, um, estimates say the market has a size of about 42 billion US dollars, and we want Europe to be a key player um, in this market. 
of course. We want to increase the visibility and reach of all members of the European language technology landscape, including the growing community of language technology developers and users in Iceland, of course. And I was impressed and happy to see that so much is going on in Iceland already, and we want to support this, and we want to help you grow. ELG is a long-term initiative. We will establish a legal entity for sustainability purposes to drive this forward, hopefully for a very long time. And we want to contribute to digital language equality in Europe by giving all our languages one virtual home and umbrella platform that collects all services and all resources with the European Language Equality Project. Our next steps, right now we are working on the third release of the European Language Grid platform which will be made available in early 2022. We will um, establish the legal entity for ELG and then the next Meta Forum conferences are also being organized as we speak. And we will finish up then in June next year. Then we will transform into the legal entity phase. Thanks very much for your attention, for your interest. And um, please feel free to reach out in case of questions or comments or if you want to collaborate with us. Thanks very much.